May the 4th be with you. I can't believe I've never started an episode like that. Today, join me for your overview of the recent printing of Star Wars by Jason Aaron Omnibus from Marvel Comics. So, let's get started. Before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us a copy of this omnibus. So this omnibus is actually due out today on May the 4th. However, you're only going to be able to find the two direct market covers, one of them being this one here by Mark Brooks. The other one is the one by Stuart Eminem, the one with Yoda there. And these are only available at comic book stores and places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, Walt's Comic Shop, In Stock Trades, Dying Breed Collectors, Organic Price Books, DCBS, places like that. The cover on the left-hand side, that is your standard edition cover. That one will be coming out on May 10th everywhere. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, wherever you get Omnis, that's the cover that's going to come out everywhere. Now, I am going to be doing a comparison to my original printing, but first... Uh, the cover is not the only thing that's different between these three. Each one of them has a different spine. So the standard edition has Luke Skywalker there. And the direct market cover by Stuart Eminem has Yoda there. And you may be asking yourself, wait a minute, I didn't think Yoda was going to be in these comics. If these take place after episode four, I'll be talking a little bit more about that here when we open up the book and check out the artwork. But first... Let's take a closer look at these books. So on the left-hand side, you have my original printing there. I have the John Cassidy cover, which is the only cover that was available then. We didn't have another direct market cover for this. Now we have two. Uh, on the right-hand side is the new printing by Mark Brooks. And again, we saw the differences in the pictures on the spine. But the other big difference is this. Now it's Star Wars by Jason Aaron instead of Star Wars by Jason Aaron. So pretty interesting that they changed that up. The back, however, had to change because they used this for one of the direct market covers. So each of the new printings, no matter what cover and spine you get, has this right there in the back. Everything else is identical. Uh, the Force is Strong with Jason Aaron and the blurbs right there from IGN and Comicosity are also down there. Quick little recap as to what's in here. What's collected in here, Disney, that's all the same. Of course, a different ISBN, but the price is still the same. $125 when it came out originally, and $125 for the reprint. Underneath the dust jacket, I believe it's the same. I've read this a couple of times now. Uh, but we have this piece right here by Mark Brooks. Yes, it's identical. Um, and of course, this is from the Vader Down storyline. So it's this awesome piece. And... Here, let me give it some justice there. All right. So let's go ahead and get this new printing open, look at the artwork, talk about some of the stories in here, where this takes place, and then do a comparison with the internal artwork from the original printing. Let's get this opened up. We have some black end paper there. Star Wars by Jason Aaron. And here are the credits for each of these issues. Uh, you have the writer, artist, color artist, inkers, letters, uh, whoever worked on these particular books, they're all credited here. Of course, most of this written by Jason Aaron, but you are going to see some names in there like Kelly Thompson, uh, Kieran Gillen. And here we go. We kick it off with Star Wars, issue number one, The Skywalker Strikes, not The Skywalker Strikes Back, Skywalker Strikes, part one, Star Wars. Don't you just hear the theme when you open that up? Oh, man. Uh, here, of course, is the text scrolling up like you get in all the Star Wars movies. And then we get the cinematic kind of opening. As a matter of fact, the first few arcs are very cinematic in the way that they're drawn. Uh, so this does collect the Star Wars uh, issues 1 through 37 uh, from 2015. Uh, Vader down one shot. Darth Vader 13 through 15. The Screaming Citadel, One Shot, uh, Dr. Aphra 7 and 8, and then Star Wars Annuals 1, 2, and 3. Now, 2015, that is the year when Disney got Star Wars back. And of course, since Disney bought Marvel, 
means that now we have Star Wars comics back at Marvel because they were at Dark Horse for a long time, but it all started at Marvel Comics years ago. Marvel was publishing Star Wars comics in between the movies. Uh, so I'm sure that was a bigger task than what uh, the people... Not that this isn't good, but I'm just saying like to come up with stories and they couldn't do certain things to characters uh, because they didn't know where the characters were going to be in the next movie, like Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, that's that was a task, I'm sure. So, Jason Aaron writing the stories of Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, Chewbacca, C-3PO, R2-D2. And one thing you're going to note is that it's not just them. You're going to see other characters in here, too. Uh, for example, here, let's just look at this. You have Triple Zero right there with Dr. Aphra. She's a brand new character to the Star Wars universe, but it's all in canon now. Of course, you got that awesome picture of Darth Vader and Luke there. All of this takes place after the Death Star is blown up in Star Wars A New Hope, or what was just once known as Star Wars. So a little bit of a spoiler there, in case you haven't seen that, but I mean... I don't know. Everybody gets the comics a different way. So maybe you haven't seen the movie and you want to read it. Uh, well, guess what? You're going to find out that a Death Star blew up within the very first three pages. So Luke is still learning the way of the Force. He's still not confident. I like that about him. It was different than some of the issues of Star Wars that I read from Brian Wood, where Luke was like, I blew up the Death Star. He's kind of cocky about it. In this, he's like, I think I got lucky. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. He gets his lightsaber taken away. We'll, we'll get there here in a few. I'm not going to spoil big story arcs in here, but just kind of give you a feel of what you're going to get in these particular issues. So I think Aaron did a really good job of capturing their voices, whether it's Han Solo or Luke Skywalker or Princess Leia. And then on top of that, you know, we have this character right there that just shows up like a complete badass. So, like I said, the story kicks off after the Death Star and the Rebellion is now moving forward with their plans to take out the Empire. So, in this very first few issues, the Rebels go out to a weapon station and they want to destroy this weapon station. It's an Empire weapon station. However, it's not the only thing they find there. We'll get there here in a second. Chewbacca's out there with a sniper rifle, and, and Princess Leia's like, Take the shot, Chewie! You gotta kill Darth Vader, even if it kills us. Now, of course, because we know where Empire Strikes Back starts, we know the key players that are gonna be left alive. So when you're reading this, there is a little bit of that. Ugh, I know that these characters aren't gonna die. But there are some things in here that weren't talked about in the movies that expand on it. I love that. And that's why I love the show like The Mandalorian. Um, but let's go back to this. So yes, Chewie takes the shot. Darth Vader blocks it with his awesome lightsaber and then uses stormtroopers to block the rest of the shots. And then taking down the tower, of course, where Chewie was. All the first arc is drawn by John Cassidy. And we'll get there uh, in a little bit. But remember when I said it was a weapon station? Well, it wasn't. Turns out that they had some slaves there. So now it makes this mission a lot more important than it originally was. But not before Luke Skywalker has to face Darth Vader. Now, this hasn't happened. This doesn't happen until Empire Strikes Back. So, of course, they can throw in some stories like this that they don't have to necessarily talk about in Empire. It's not like... Luke and Darth said, oh, we're meeting again for the first time. Remember that time we fought in issue number two of Star Wars? Nothing like that. So it's just understood, just like a lot of things are in the expanded universe. I love this. I thought this was a great fight. You know, he runs into Darth Vader and he's like, this is the man that killed Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is the man that killed my father. And he says, you killed my father. And he's, Darth Vader's like, I've killed many fathers. You gotta be a little more specific. Because Darth Vader during this time is also looking for that pilot that destroyed the Death Star. He has no idea it's Luke Skywalker. As a matter of fact, he just throws Luke Skywalker off as this little peon. He takes his lightsaber. And he uses his lightsaber, you know, with the Force, to kill some of the slaves. Meanwhile, you have Han Solo and Princess Leia taking an at-at and trying to get away. So I love that. I love that you have this meetup between father and son. Darth Vader has no idea that Luke Skywalker is the guy that blew up the Death Star. He starts getting an idea later on, nor does he have any idea that Luke Skywalker 
is his son, or his name is Luke Skywalker. But there are some subtle differences in this. So the first story arc is about that. We get to see a lot of key players that play a bigger part later on that don't appear until Empire, even though uh, his... No, that was in the special edition. Forget it. Um, there is a really cool part with Boba Fett where he comes in and he actually learns something about this young rebel that destroyed the Death Star. And he shares that with Darth Vader, making Darth Vader just focus more on finding Luke. And Luke finds the journal of Obi-Wan Kenobi. So when we were looking at the covers, we were looking at the variant covers, uh, there was a cover of Yoda, and I said, oh, some of y'all are like, wait a minute, if this takes place after episode four, how's Yoda in this? Because Yoda doesn't appear until Empire. Well, because of that journal, there are some flashback issues in here. You get a flashback uh, that's drawn by Simone Bianchi, and here, let me get there. And it's a flashback of a young Obi-Wan Kenobi making it to Tatooine, keeping an eye on a young Luke Skywalker. Uh, there's also, when I flip through, through here, a new character, Sana, who has a history with Han Solo, a big history with him, and plays a big crucial part in all of this. As a matter of fact, she appears from her first appearance like throughout the entire book. So she is a key player um, not just in Han Solo's past, but in the future of the Rebellion. So Boba Fett's not the only bounty hunter that appears, and they're not the only characters that appear throughout these pages. Uh, so whenever Boba Fett sh told uh, Darth Vader that little secret about Luke, that all leads into Vader down, and that's when the characters meet Dr. Aphra, who was a character that was introduced in the pages of Darth Vader, Kieran Gillen's run, which was running along the same time as this. And this is when you see Darth Vader just take down the, the... Oh, man, just be completely ruthless. Like, remember when I did an overview, or if you didn't watch it, go back and watch it. I did an overview of The Empire Volume 1 where I said he was ruthless. And he cuts loose a lot more because all of this, you know, this was coming out before the Rogue One movie. So you didn't really get to see that Darth Vader throughout episodes four, five, and six. But in Empire and in this, you do see him cut loose, especially in Gillen's run too. And I think it the crossover is just awesome where the characters interact with Dr. Aphra. Santa has a... Um, what's called a history with Dr. Aphra, not just Han Solo. Luke gets to meet the assassin droids of BD-1 and Triple uh, Zero. And then, of course, uh, Black Chrysanthemum shows up in here to fight Chewbacca. I really enjoyed this crossover. It's one of the best crossovers. This is also collected, of course, in the Darth Vader by Gillen Omnibus. And yes, there's this awesome fight. It's a brutal fight between both of these Wookiees. Uh, so let's fast forward a little bit here. You have Lionel Francis Yu stepping in. There's this awesome team up between these three ladies, Dr. Afra Santa and Princess Leia, while Luke and Han Solo are on their own mission. I'm not going to talk about each of the stories, but kind of give you a little bit of um, a taste of the artwork. This is a flashback issue by Mike Mayhew, suggesting that maybe Black Chrysanthemum and Obi-Wan Kenobi had met in the past. Now, Stuart Eminem takes over, then Jorge Molina takes over the run, and eventually it does become Salvador La Roca's book, uh, towards the end of Jason Aaron's uh, book. So, remember the journals of Obi-Wan Kenobi? Well, that also features this little character, Yoda, and where Yoda eventually was between episodes 3 and 4, and where you'll find him in uh, Dagobah where eventually Luke finds him there. So I, I like that particular story too. The Screaming Citadel is interesting because it's about this queen that's eating... Well, actually, you can find out for yourself, but check out this beautiful artwork before you do. Uh, the one shot is drawn by Marco Cicchetto. So I just want you to fall in love with this artwork. This was also collected in the Dr. Afra omnibus. It's just gorgeous. I love that uh, he's back doing now Daredevil with Chip Zdarsky. Phenomenal artist, and I'm glad that he's finally got a big flagship title. Not that Star Wars wasn't. Here's some Jorge Molina artwork, and then some Salvador La Roca artwork as well. Now, the annuals uh, 
focus on different characters. One of them is about a rebel that is infiltrating the Empire. Uh, the second one is about this character named Bash and the team up with Princess Leia. And the third one is about... It's pretty much Princess Leia and uh, Han Solo. It's like their own <laughs> solo story. All right. But I'm not going to go through the back here. I'm not going to talk about the stories here. There are stormtroopers with lightsabers. You can find out what that's all about. But I did want to showcase... This is when I noticed a big change in the artwork of Salvador La Roca. Okay, so this is when a lot of people were saying that his artwork changed. And I noticed it when I was reading the Omnibus uh, for the first time a couple of years ago. Because I was like, what are you talking about? Salvador La Roca is awesome. I loved his artwork when he was doing uh, the Fantastic Four, when he was drawing uh, Excalibur. I had been following him for years. But his art has changed so much so that, I mean, some of these faces look like they are just grabbed from the actual movie. And they stand out so much because of the colors. Like, that is Harrison Ford. Whereas, like, and it's not always like that. Like, he actually, maybe to cut time because of deadlines he did that. I'm not sure, but that, I mean, that is Harrison Ford. Compared to something like what we were looking at earlier with uh, Cassidy or even Stuart Eminem. I really like Stuart Eminem's uh, Luke Skywalker. He has that innocence in his eyes. I think Stuart Eminem, man, he's a great artist. Um, but yeah, Salvador La Roca's art has changed towards here, and you'll notice things like that. They do stand out. Uh, and then the story, or the omnibus, ends with uh, the little short story here of the Sand People. This one's drawn by Andre uh, Sorrentino. Then we get to the extras. So we have variant covers. This one's by Joe Quesada. And this one here is the Connecting Variants by Jeffrey Scott Campbell. Connecting Variants by um, Scotty Young. Movie Very Jackson. This is a character that was original in the, um, the original comic series. It looks like Bucky O'Hare. There's a reason for that. Rest in peace, Neil Adams. Um, Alex Ross Variants. Lionel Francis Yu. Sergio Argones. Howard Chaikin. And just different variants. I mean... Some of the variants are actually collected in between the issues. Uh, so, like, you have the standard edition, and on the opposite page, you have some of the variants. Uh, but most of them are all collected back here, all the way in the back. The toy variants, they became really popular, so much so that they actually have a release of just the toy variants, like, in one trade paperback. Uh, the book has 1,192 pages, so almost 1,200 pages. So it is... A big book. We're not going to go through all of these. Let's uh, skip some and show some more variants. This is from the Vader Down storyline. We have an interview here with Jason Aaron and Kieran Gillen. Talking about the Vader Down story. Thumbnail sketches. I think these were for the teasers. Yeah. Santa's uh, concept art right there. This is who I was talking about, Bash. I know her name is Pash, but they call her Bash in the story. And then the droid dilemma in memory of Kenny Baker. Of course, that was uh, the actor that played R2 that was inside of the R2-D2 suit. And then we end the omnibus. So let's take a look at this binding, and then we'll do a comparison. So at almost 1,200 pages, this is what the eye looks like. This is printed at the Donnelly printer. And let's compare it to the first book right here by showing some just uh, random pages. Uh, the first printing was actually printed at the Leo Paper Company in China. So let's start with the way this looks. So I do this angle just to point out the differences, which is hardly any. But the original printing up at the top does look like it has darker colors. Whereas the border on Star Wars in the new printing looks a little bit brighter. And here's another page for that comparison. And both of them really the exact same type of gutter loss, which is very minimal. All right, so yeah, it looks like the colors are just a little bit darker in the original printing than they are in the new printing. As far as the paper quality, because I'm sure I'm gonna be asked, being that it's 1192 pages, honestly, the Donnelly printer, it feels Hmm. It, maybe just a little bit thinner than the Leo paper. And let's actually look at 
I wanted to see it, the binding so you have the original printing here from Leo and the new printing here from the Donley printer. Um, they look just as thick, honestly. Both printings do. Let's uh, do a little more comparison in the colors and in the internal artwork. Just showcasing them side by side for the color differences, which is hardly any at all. And just one more page. So, hardly any differences at all. And that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below which cover you're picking up. If you've never read a single Star Wars comic, I'd love to know what you think, if this is your first one, or what your favorite Star Wars comic is. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar, and if you have any more questions, leave your questions down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. And may the force be with you. You know, going to Catholic school for years, I always want to respond to people with, and also with you. I know I can't be the only one. <laughs>